Hello there! I know this is not the voice you are used to hear, so let me introduce myself. I am Enrique Campos, aka PigDev, and I have a game development channel which also uses purely open source tools, so if game development and open source shine your eyes, make sure to check out my channel, but not now, because me and Nathan came up together to make a series of videos talking about plugin development using Godot Engine. In this video, I will introduce the editor plugin class, and in a video in my channel, I will show you how you can make a very simple plugin that will rename multiple nodes, because currently Godot doesn't have this feature. So, the final result will look like this. So, let's get started. The way Godot handles plugins is that they should all be inside a folder called add-ons. So let's create this add-ons folder. Add -ons. And now we can create the folder for our add-on. So I will create another folder here and I will call this batch rename. Next, what we have to do in order to have this add-on accessible is to add a configuration file. But this file can't be done with Godot Engine, so we'll have to use an external text editor. So here I am in Atom, which is my text editor tool. I will create a new file and save this inside the batch rename folder, the plugin folder, and I will call this plugin.configuration. The next thing that you have to do in order to make Godot recognize that this is indeed a configuration file for a plugin is to add inside brackets the keyword plugin. And this will make sure that Godot now recognizes that this is the configuration file for this specific plugin. Next, you can add the name of the plugin, which in this case will be something like batch rename. Then you add the description for this plugin, a plugin that takes multiple, multiple nodes in the scene tree tab and rename them. Next, you add the author of this plugin, which in my case is Enrique Campos, then the version of the atom, and this follows the semantic versioning. So you add the major version, the feature version, and the minor version. And if you don't know how to use versions like this, you can search on the web for semantic versioning. The last and most important thing that you have to add in the plugin configuration file is the script that will initialize your plugin. In our case, it will be something like plugin.gd. You can name this wherever you like, but you have to pass the path to this initialization script. This works as a path, so if you have your initialization script outside the plugin folder, you can pass the path to it, so if you have it on the root of your project, it will be something like this. But in our case, the initialization script will be on the root of the plugin folder. So we can leave it like this. If everything goes well, in the project, project settings, and the plugins tab, you'll have your atom already configured. So it's inactive because we don't have anything yet, but it will be displayed here. If you try to activate this, you'll see that it says that the Godot couldn't load the plugin file that we set as in its initialization file. So, let's create this file. I'll go to the script workspace and let me expand this. So, I will create a new script and it has to inherit from editor plugin. I will leave the template as empty and the path should be the path that we, we say that will be the path in the configuration file. So, add-ons, batch rename and plugin.gd and here we have our plugin script created. But before we try to make our plugin, let's understand the power that we have in our hands, the power that the Godot developers gave to us in order to extend the Godot editor. So I will hold Ctrl and click on this editor plugin keyword here 
to open the documentation for this class. And here we are in the documentation for the editor plugin. You can see at first glance that it inherits from Node. So what you can presume is that when we load this script, when we activate this script, it creates a node that will be added to the sync tree that is responsible to process the editor. If you don't know this, the Godot engine editor is basically a game made with Godot in C++. Everything we see here in the editor is basically just an application of what Godot itself is capable of doing, but done with C++. As you can see, the editor plugin class has a lot of useful methods, but let's try to be very straight here. The most useful methods that you will use while doing plugins are the handles method, which allows you to tell to the editor that this plugin works with a very specific object, with a very specific type of object, which will allow you to use the edit method, which of course receives this object, which you are trying to, to work with, and also the make visible method, which will be used in order to make your plugin visible if you try to extend the editor itself using one of these methods here, the add control to methods. So let's try to understand how these methods work as well. The add control to bottom panel allows you to add a UI element to this bottom panel right here. The add control to container method will allow you to add a UI element to one of the containers of the editor. The containers are basically UI elements that are displayed in workspaces. So for example, the container spatial editor menu would be this menu here in the 3D workspace. And the container canvas editor menu would be the menu displayed here in the 2D workspace. Using the add control to container method, you can add UI elements to these elements of the Godot editor itself. Next, we have the add control to dock method, which allows you to add a control node to a dock slot. And you can use the disarrange of dockers to add your controls. So you can use the left docker, the right docker, and you can also use sub elements of this docker. So the top and bottom dockers, and also the left bottom and the right bottom, left top and right top, and so on. Then we have, in my opinion, is one of the most powerful methods from editor plugin class, which is the ability to get the editor interface, which is a node responsible for everything that is displayed here. So we have access to the very interface we are working on. So let's enter in the editor interface class. You will notice that it's also a node. And with this node, we have the power to access a lot of very important and cool elements of the Godot editor interface. For example, we can have access to the base control node, which is the node responsible to organize everything that you can see here. We also have access to the scene root. So if you add a node here, let's say a simple node, you can have access to it, to the root node being edited. You also have access to the editor viewport, which contrary to what it may sound, it doesn't return a viewport node. It returns a VBox container node, which represents what you see in the center of the screen. Next, you also have access to the editor selection, which is a class responsible to tell you what is being selected in the editor right now. So you can have access to what is being selected in the scene tree. And you may notice that you can also get access to the script editor itself. So you can even extend the way you extend stuff, the way you create plugins, the way you script your objects. You can extend the very way you code in Godot. Back to the editor plugin class, you notice that we have some signals that will allow us to handle some relevant events that happen in the editor, such as the main screen changed, which is what happens when you change the workspace. So when we switch from 2D to 3D and vice versa and to script as well, the scene changed. So if you switch the scene and even the scene closed when you close the scene. Let's go back to our script, 
because we still have one thing to do before we can dig into the behavior of our plugin, the plugin itself. The first thing that we have to do in order to make Godot recognize that this script is a tool script, it, it is meant to run in the editor, is to add the tool keyword on the top of the script. This will enable the script to run in the editor. Without this keyword, a script only runs when you execute the game. But with this keyword, we enable the script to run in the editor itself. This is what we need in order to make a plugin, right? We want it to run in the editor. And that's it! Nathan will show a more complex and more elaborated plugin next, but for this video, that's it! I hope you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, to subscribe, and don't forget to check the second part where we actually make this add-on, where we define its behavior. In my channel, the link will be in the first comment. So, that's it, thank you so much for watching, keep developing, and until the next time.